This book, you, uh, you are unsparing in this book. You talk about the highs, the lows, and uh, what's pretty compelling, which I think most people don't realize, is that Aerosmith, you guys get started. You're one of the biggest rock and roll acts in the 70s, hugely successful, and then you guys all fell on hard times to the point where you were forced to sell your favorite guitar. Now, I'm a guitar buff. It's a 1959 Les Paul. This was a guitar that was your guitar uh, that you used on all these classic songs that everybody here knows, and you had to sell that guitar? Well, it was, uh, let's see, 1980. I, it, I just left Aerosmith, and it was Christmas time, and I needed some bread. And uh, um, actually, I was playing Stratocasters a lot right around then. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, that was the best guitar to sell. I could get rid of it pretty quick because right. they are very rare. And like you said, you know uh, the, the value to them. So anyway, I sold it and uh, really didn't think much of it. You probably it. sold it for not nearly what, it, not a, a fraction of what you would get for it today. Well, let's just say I didn't bid it out. You know, I mean, there was no eBay or anything like that. Back right, then. Right. I just called up my, uh, one of my dealer friends anyway. So, um, Time went on, and uh, over the years, uh, the band got back together again, and we started um, starting to uh, have some success again. And I thought maybe it'd be a good idea to, maybe if I, I could find um, some of those old guitars that, that had gone the way of the wind, you know? So um, I started looking for this one, and I had all my guitar techs out looking everywhere, and Brad walks in and said, I know where your guitar is, and he opens up a guitar magazine, and the centerfold had Slash's guitar collection, and right in the middle was that guitar. So Slash had ended up with your guitar? Yeah, it changed hands, and it ended up in his, his hands, and he's made no bones about the fact that he's been a fan of the band, and uh, boy, when, I, when I, he, I called him up, and he was like, oh, please don't ask me, man, don't ask me that, you know, because you did not want to get rid of it. Did you say I'll buy it back? I, yeah, uh, I said I'll pay you whatever you want for it, because it, it had, like, doubled in price by then. And, right. And, uh, and he said, well, listen, I'll think about it. So I, I called him back, and over a series of uh, months go by, and I'm talking to him, and, you know, every, I'd, I'd ask him. And then finally, he stopped taking my calls, and I, I finally had to... <laughs> I had, to, I had to sit him down Slash and say, just put his hat over the phone. Yeah, he was like, I, I, don't want, I don't want to hear that anymore, man. And I knew it was getting in the way of our friendship, and I said, look, I'll never ask you about it again, man. I just want, if you ever want to sell it back, just, just, you know, give me a call, whatever, but I'm not going to bug you about it. And uh, at my 50th birthday, um, Cheap Trick was playing. They came in to, to play, and uh, I sat in with them, and in the middle of the set, my guitar tech walks up and hands me this guitar. And it was the guitar, and Slash gave it to me. Slash gave it to you. That is a sweet guy. We have our personal experiences. We've done a lot of bits. I've done a lot of things with Slash. And he is one of the nicest guys you'll ever I'll meet. I'll tell you, he's got, he did that. his heart is so big, I don't know how it fits in his chest. Yeah. I mean, he's amazing. Yeah. That's a scary description. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we've got to get Slash some medical attention.